Hey, it's Professor S, and for the next five minutes or less, I want to talk about one of the biggest, most important ideas in modern biology, and that's cell theory. Cell theory has a lot of complexity to it, as does any modern theory, and I want to focus here on three of the biggest takeaways from cell theory that define how we think about living organisms and how we think about structures of cells. And so, first of all, first big takeaway, big tenet of cell theory, all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. Now this opens up a whole question as to the uh, uh, issue of whether viruses are living or not. I'm with a lot of biologists who would say they're not cells, therefore they're not living, but they are biological entities. They're just not living. Uh, there's some other biologists who claim that they are living. That's really more of a conceptual argument that doesn't impact the nitty gritty of basic biological understanding. So one, all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. Two, cells are the fundamental unit of life. They're the smallest unit of life, and all processes associated with life occur within cells. Uh, those are processes like reproduction uh, and metabolism, just to name two. And then finally, cells arise only from the division of pre-existing cells. Uh, all new cells come from cells that already exist. They don't just pop out of nothingness. Now, there's a separate question of the origin of the first cells. There's actually a whole separate body of theory in biophysics uh, called primary abiogenesis that deals with that issue. What we're talking about is life as we understand it in the world in which we live. Cells are derived only from pre-existing cells. There are two big categories of cells uh, that we've identified. The first big category are called eukaryotic cells. And this includes a, a pretty wide range of organisms that all share a, a core cellular structure. This includes the metazoans or the animals, which includes us. Uh, it includes the plants and it includes fungi, as well as a whole bunch of other kingdoms that have collectively been called protists uh, that are nevertheless really important. And when you get to a diversity course that talks about protists, pay attention uh, because there's a lot of really important organisms in there that are not animals, plants, or fungi. But those are all eukaryotic organisms, or, or are composed of eukaryotic cells. By contrast, there are the prokaryotes. Uh, prokaryotes include the bacteria and the archaebacteria. Uh, they have distinct shapes that we see with them uh, very frequently. This one that you see right now is a rod or bacillus shape. There's also a sphere or caucus shape that's not uncommon. And there's actually a number of other basic shape types but I'm just limiting it to those two as an introductory statement. Now, when we look at all of these types of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, the question then becomes what do cells of all types have in common and then what differentiates them? So let's realign these so we've got just a collection of prokaryotes and eukaryotes above my head, and let's focus on what they have in common. First of all, they all have DNA in the form of a chromosome. All of them have at least one chromosome composed of DNA, all of them. All of them are formed with a plasma membrane that surrounds cytoplasm, uh, a fluid matrix that includes everything in the cell, basically. And then finally, they all use organelles called ribosomes to carry out protein synthesis so they can build the proteins they need to stay alive. Now, in terms of differences, let's start with what seems to be obvious. Uh, prokaryotes tend to be a lot smaller than eukaryotes, but this is biology and it seems to always be defined by the exception. Uh, the actual largest single-celled organisms we know of are prokaryotes. But in general, eukaryotes are much bigger. Uh, second of all, eukaryotes have linear chromosomes. They're linear in structure, and they have more than one, whereas prokaryotes have a single circular chromosome uh, in their structure. And then finally, eukaryotes have internal membranous structures. If you look at the cells, you can see they're far more complex inside. They have a nucleus where the chromosomes are found, walled off from the rest of the cells, as well as other organelles contained by membranes. Prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, and they do not have organelles with membranes, except for the cyanobacteria, which do have some membranous compartments within them. They're the exception, but they don't have a nucleus, so that holds. Uh, so there you have it, the three basic tenets of cell theory, three things that all cells share in common, and things that differentiate the two types of cells from each other.
I know we're gonna, we're gonna get this one first. I'm feeling a good one. You ready? Okay, here we go. Hey, this is Professor S, and if you enjoyed that video, here's a couple others you may find useful. And uh, don't forget, hit the button to subscribe so you don't miss anything that I post as it comes out. What are you laughing about? That was a good take. We may have to redo that take. Redo it? Why? Because you laughing? No, your fly was down the entire take. <laughs>